Hello guys, it is Yellowtail Gaming, aka Nick K, aka that stupidly sweaty guy from the sauna. And today we're talking about another Lee gun review. I feel disgusting for just saying that. Today we're going to be talking about the Amalon Exotic Auto Rifle, the Hard Light. Hard Light is a very unique weapon that I will get into later, but first, let's give the rundown on the perks. Its barrel choices are CQB Ballistics, Accurized Ballistics, and Aggressive Ballistics. Then you have Quick Draw and Fitted Stock, followed by Volatile Light. Uh, rounds from this weapon have no damage falloff, over-penetrate targets, and ricochet off hard surfaces. Followed by Glass Half Full and Spray and Play. You're in the lead. Um, if you don't know what those are, Quick Draw uh, lets you switch weapons faster. Fitted Stock gives you increased stability. Uh, glass half full will make the bottom half of your magazine slowly start to deal increased damage, and spray and play increases the uh, reload speed of your gun when you have no ammunition in the magazine, aka empty. What truly makes this gun good is it's a very versatile gun. Just like many of the exotic auto rifles, I am a very big fan of versatility. Versatility is the name of my game. May not be the name of your game, it's the name of my game. Why is this gun so versatile? Well, it's good in PvP and PvE due to its Volatile Light perk. Volatile Light, rounds have no damage fall off, over penetrate targets, and ricochet off hard surfaces. I already said this, but uh, just bear with me. So in PvP, what makes this gun good is it's no damage fall off. No other gun in the game has no damage fall off. Some guns might outrange the map, and by that I mean there is no single area where the range of the map is greater than the range of your gun. But having zero damage fall off means that no matter what your range stat is, it doesn't matter because you'll be dealing maximum damage at all ranges. Does that mean that your range stat is completely inconsequential? It actually doesn't, because range stat also blah 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 blah. Fucking kill me. Your range stat encompasses accuracy and weapon handling as well. Those are two secondary stats that are not listed. As your range go up, as your range goes up, man, just fucking end me. Words are doing great today. As your range goes up, your accuracy will go up, meaning that your rounds are more likely to hit where your reticle is aiming. But also, as your range goes up, your weapon handling goes down. So you switch weapons slower, you ADS slightly slower. It's not something you notice very much, but if you're a very high-end player, um, it can be something you worry about. So having the advantage of no damage fall off means that you can completely disregard your range stat. If you don't want to be accurate, get rid of it. Make your gun stupid fast. Put on quick drop. Put on uh, aggressive ballistics. Put on spray and play. You've got a very quick weapon now. However, if you are a bigger fan of a more patient, uh, thought out approach, maybe you put on glass half full. Uh, CQB, Accurized, and then you put on that uh, fitted stock. That way you're increasing your range a little bit, decreasing that recoil, but your perk isn't going to be as useful if you aren't ready to use it. So, into PvE. Why is this gun good in PvE? Well, over-penetrating targets and ricocheting off hard surfaces. Damage falloff, not as important. You're fighting at a mid-close range instead of a mid-long range. But, because there are hordes of enemies instead of single or double targets, the ability to hit multiple hit enemies with a single bolt. You can hit two, three, if you're lucky, four or five targets with one bullet each one spreading that same damage across all targets. 
a horde of thrall comes out of a doorway, you spray down the doorway. You know, say it takes 10 rounds to kill a thrall, you spend 15, and you've killed 8 thrall. Granted, that's unlikely, but it is very possible. Um, for example, one of my favorite strikes is uh, Will of Crota. That first room is one of my favorite fights in the game, just because of all the thrall you get to sh you get to just mow down. Uh, pulling in Zalo or Bad Bad Juju in there is always a fun thing to do. However, this gun also very satisfying by killing eight, nine, ten enemies with a single burst of your gun. So once again, versatility, name of my game. Uh, if I were to recommend something to you, I'd recommend being trying to be as versatile as possible. However, that's your prerogative, not mine. Downsides to this gun has to be its recoil pattern. I've been saying all these praises about what you can do, how versatile this gun is. Uh, the biggest downside to this gun that I see, though, is its goddamn recoil pattern. Its actual recoil isn't that bad. It has a very steady, concise recoil. However, its visual pattern, um, when I talk about visual pattern compared to recoil pattern, if you go up to a flat wall and just shoot the gun, the holes you see in the wall are what I classify as recoil pattern. However, the visual pattern is what your reticle is doing. And most of the time, they are not very far apart. Your recoil pattern lies very closely to your visual pattern. However, with the hard light, that is not the case. And it is very annoying that that is not the case. The visual pattern on this gun bounces above where you're going to shoot and then pulls back down. It's something that no other gun really does, which makes it hard to balance and hard to use. Once you get the recoil down, once you understand how it's going to recoil, uh, where the next shot's going to land, it is a very solid, steady weapon to use. However, since its recoil is so bouncy, so rubbery, it can be a very jarring thing to get used to and account for. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I don't know how to explain it really. It's it's a feeling you can only get while using the gun. Um, anybody that's used the gun knows exactly what I'm talking about. Hopefully my footage in the background might be able to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. If you pay attention, uh, each shot of the gun bounces up really high and then pulls slightly back down. Um, but other than the recoil, I can't think of it anything bad to say about this gun. Enemy Decent range, no damage fall off, uh, 88 8 fire rate which is the medium rate of fire, um, personal favorite once again due to versatility. It's got uh, packs a punch at closer ranges but if built right can push out into long range too. Mid long range, excuse me. Um, very great recoil, uh, not recoil, very a great magazine, uh, blah 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 blah, words. Uh, man, am I articulate. Uh, I got a magazine size of 40, which I believe is higher than any of the 88.8 uh, weapons without a magazine increase. Um, this does not have one. And with its perk set, you can really build it out to be anything you want it to be. Heavy ammo inbound. I prefer to go with spray and play, CQB ballistics, and fitted stock. That's my that's my uh, personal choice on it. Because I will try to chase people around corners with the bullets, not with myself. So if somebody backs around a corner, I'll try to spray down an opposing wall, hit the ceiling, do something like that to try to get the bullets to bounce around the corner. In which case, I tend to ex expend a lot of my ammunition and want a quick reload. However, that doesn't mean I want to uh, get rid of my long range ability too, so I put on fitted stock at CQ blah blah blah, blah CQ blee. What is wrong with me? Just fucking kill me. CQB ballistics. CQB ballistics, CQB ballistics, CQB ballistics. 
to negate that re that weird jonky recoil as much as possible. Do I think this is worth using as an exotic? No, actually. As much as I've been praising this gun, there are better exotic choices. Weapons that have more kick behind them. Uh, you know, longer range, better sights. It's just, just, there are guns that excel in different places. Hard light, just like the Suros, is a jack of all trades. It's a gun that is very useful in multiple different situations, but is not uh, explicitly good in any one zone. It's got the crowd killing potential of the Zalo or Telesto, Bad Juju, and it's also got the more ranged abilities of the Suros, the Mita, um, some of that kind of stuff. But it doesn't push it as far as they do. So if you're looking for a situation in which to use this gun, I'd say just don't. Pick something else. Suros for better range. Uh, Zalo for better crowd killing. And I don't know what else to say about it. So I guess I'll end it here. If you have any comments, um, things you want to clear up, um, please drop them down below. Want to see me? talk about something else, have a weapon combination, weapon armor. Uh, I did a Juggernaut review uh, with Eternal Warrior recently. Um, anything like that you want checked out, uh, please drop a comment. I will read it. If you want to tell me how bad I am, please feel free to do that too. Uh, I'm not going to pay attention, but you can. And, uh... Man... Does my hunter look good? Alright, well, of course, like and subscribe down below, comment, yada yada yada. Have a good whatever the hell you're having right now. Thank you, and fuck yourself.